questions in. Will I read these? <laughs> Will he replicate ZMTs and stake his ZMTs on the X1 chain? If so, what's the value of continues to use Zen? Like a lot of stuff I can just answer myself probably. Will he replicate ZMTs? I don't think Zen's gonna be on. I, I wanna ask about that actually. Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. Is I think he said Zen's not gonna be on there. It's like, well, what if somebody does it? What if somebody brings it over there? Are you prepared for a taste of a dose of your own medicine? Let's see what else we got here. So get your retweets in, get your questions in. Ask him if these he's the dev or is there a team? Thanks. Uh oh, Jack said he's here. Let's see. Okay, let's see. There we go. Hold on a second. I like your outfit this morning. Thank you, man. I reckon it's pause. Oh, hold on. Let me get you pulled make up me, here. Make me feel uh, under underdressed. I think you're underdressed, man. You're looking nice and casual today. Uh, I always look casual. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So what's up, man? What's new, man? How you been? Uh, it's, it's, it's good, you know, building shit, breaking shit, you know, that sort of thing. <laughs> That's, uh, I was about to get into some of these stats, man. I haven't looked at the stats yet. You kind of, you actually yeah. kind of early. By the way, I don't see you. You kind of like on the side, there's two of me and one of you. Oh, uh, yeah. It's maybe kinda, I'm just... maybe get, get rid of one of me. Oh, let's see. Let's see if we do it like this. Oh, this is better. Oh, uh, yeah, that is better. That works. Are we are we on uh you're on OBS, right? Yeah. I want I wanna show you something real quick. Alright. Okay, don't, don't send me no virus, man. Dude, you're, Here, you're click my favorite, uh, You're my favorite uh Trevon, so there's there's no way I'm, I'm oh, let me do this real it. quick. I gotta do this. There we go. Get that out of there. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, pr uh, look at the screen. Which screen? The one oh, that's okay. Sharing. Add the screen. All right, this is going to be tricky. Let me see. Um, Let me see if I can do this. Like, mm, this is going to be tricky. Well, oh, you, you're, you need to like load it in there somewhere, right? Yeah, let me do it like this. Hold up. Give me give me a second. I'm gonna make a go back to yeah, your yeah. normal view. Yeah, yeah. Go I back mean, to your I'm, normal I'm, view. I'm in no hurry. It's uh, it's your it's your show. So uh, whatever right. you want. I'm gonna do it like this. I'm gonna make a um. A new one. Let's see. Duplicate. And I'm going to make this one. Hmm. I don't know. I could do it if I had time. Let me do yeah, it like I mean, this. we don't need to show it. I just wanted to show this to you. So this thing is running on uh, on Amazon right now, AWS, and um, I'm actually running uh, tests right now. You can see those green things. Uh, it's those are blocks. The the stuff that's moving fast. One second blocks. You can see it right here. Um, each block can do about uh, fourteen hundred transactions. Hold so on, I, can, I think I can figure out a way to show it. Hold on. Let me um add. Give me a sec. I'm gonna close the door so dogs don't bark. Stream. Okay. Okay. What I can do. Okay, did it work for you? I'm getting it. Okay. 
i in this shit. Oh, it's gonna take me out. It's all right. All right, what are we looking at? Okay, this is um, this is our explorer for our L one. Uh, we have a configuration of one second block times. Well, wow, that's pretty fast, yeah. man. Uh, yeah, and there have been a million transactions so far uh, since yesterday because we've been running a bunch of load tests overnight. I'm currently running tests. You can actually see the contract calls. So I'm computing prime numbers and I'm filling up, I'm filling up the blocks. You can see the block gas limit, mm -hmm. 30 million. It's almost completely filled up. So I'm running uh, high, high computational load on it. And one transaction fills in the block completely. But yesterday we were running 1,400 transactions per second. And now to compare to Ethereum, it's only 15 transactions per second. So, so is it, is it any, is it like, why isn't everybody doing one second then? Let me ask you like that. Uh, because, because, uh, they have different mechanism of how they do validation. So like, for example, Ethereum, not only it has sequential transactions. So Polygon has parallel transactions where you can have a bunch of transactions coming in and they're going to be executed in parallel. Where in Polygon, and that's what uh, actually a problem for Pulse Chain too, every transaction that comes in have to be validated first and then the second one, then the third one, and it's all done in a serial manner. And so that makes that's what makes it slow and you need longer block times for that. Uh, with Ethereum, it's about 12 seconds. With us, it's one second because it's polygon technology and you can adjust it down to one second if you wanted to. Okay. So I've seen some, I guess I would say, I guess you could call this foot, but, um, it, someone said that polygon was hacked December 21st of 2021. Yeah. I mean, I mean, everything was hacked. I mean, the Ethereum. but do you think that's, is that a, is that a concern? I would say, no, no, it's not a concern. It's, I mean, like any, any technology that's relatively new and it's being developed uh, in real time can have a chance of it being hacked. Okay. So, but it's not that it's not specific to Polygon. I mean, anything can be hacked. No, it's, it's just how, when stuff I is guess, being developed. Is, it, get... is this a, a lesser, um, a lesser secure version of an EVM? No, no, no. The EVM is not insecure it's uh things become insecure when people develop new stuff and they're 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 just make mistakes so it's just uh ethereum was relatively lucky but it's not inher inherently insecure because it's faster that, that that is not the case it's very secure i mean looking at the tvl on polygon you can tell that there's billions of dollars there yeah. Oh, damn, what the hell? Um, so, you know, I'm not really, so, I, I'm not really, I don't really care about a layer one. It seems like everybody else does. I guess I'm, I'm going to make you care. Yeah, make, yeah, please. Also, that's my, that was my question is, <laughs> like, and you can't say, you can't say, oh, it's because everybody's asking for a, a layer one. What, yeah, what's yeah. the real reason for, for yeah. why you're making a layer one? I gotta talk to you like Chat GPT. I can't. I can't. You you can't. You can't give me that generic answer. I gotta be more specific. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I can give you the real answer. Uh, are we gonna go live or we're we just chatting? Bro, we've been live this whole time. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> you didn't know we was live. I thought that we were not live. Oh no. Uh, live. But it's good that we are. I mean, it's fine. Yeah, good thing uh, you didn't weren't, weren't saying anything, you know, horn worthy. Horn worthy. Like, yeah, I, 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 I'm a, I always make sure my porn tabs are closed before I jump on the stream. Just, just in case. <laughs> no, not that kind of horn. I mean, like, <laughs> I meant like something like, um, that you don't want the public to know. Oh, I, I want everybody to know everything. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's no big deal. Um. I'm trying to pull uh, up this chat. Oh, I got to pop out like this. Maybe, maybe not my seed phrase though. Right. Let's see. Let but I, but I don't have it uh, on my screen anyway, so. 
So yeah, what what's the um what's the the real the real reason to to for the layer? Uh, it's to make uh, it's to make Zen more valuable. Hold up, still seeing this stuff set up. Yeah. Zen will have uh, more value just because the X one uh, is derived from Zen. So usually it's other way around. You build the L one and then you issue some shit token and then you sell it to everybody and you tell your L one is the best. Therefore, but you have to buy it. Right. So that that is how it's done. So what uh, you gonna do? Well, it's already been. Uh, what we're doing is in reverse. We're basically saying. We stand on the first principles on decentralization and fairness and all of those great things that uh, crypto technology brings us. And then we're building on top of it from the ground level up, not from some idea of my L1 is going to be better than any, everybody else's. And I am this whatever Silicon Valley person who is uh, a genius level. That's not is be what's being said. What's being said is let's build the community. Let's give people the token that they can use as a utility token, but then let's actually build the actual utility. You see what I mean? So utility mm -hmm. for Zen has been so far understanding how gas works, understanding you can trade it on Uniswap, uh, creating liquidity pools, you know, things like that. Now it's uh, as NFTs, you can play with NFTs. They're very functional, but also collectible. So that's super interesting because it gets people exposure to this other market like OpenSea. And now the natural step is the progression of technology. L1, the X1, our L1 is derived from the Zen's ecosystem because he needs Zen to actually to create the gas token. You see what I mean? Yeah, I get it. I, I get, it, get it for sure. I'm just saying, I mean, I'm not really against it. I'm just wondering why it's needed. Is it? Is it needed, needed, or is it just like a, another reason to burn the original Zen? Okay, so uh, we know that Ethereum is needed, but nobody likes it because mm -hmm. it's slow, it's expensive, it doesn't scale. Uh, I mean, it has a weird founder. I mean, I like him, but a lot of people maybe don't, right? My bad. <laughs> Somebody in the chat says, of course it's needed, and that kind of triggers me. It's like, I don't I, yeah, I want to hear why it's needed. I think Ethereum works fine. To me, it works fine. I can see the gas is kind of a problem. Yeah, the gas is kind of a problem, but I mean, that's that's part of the, the, gas, the beast. Uh, the gas becomes a prom problem for uh, like uh, the NFTs are not getting minted when the gas is high, which, mm -hmm. which is actually positive. It's yeah. bullish. It's bullish. But but you see, we're, we're, we're building a, a bullish world on a problem. Mm. So we're, we're basically saying that the resources are scarce, therefore they're valuable. So we're focusing on optimization of the scarce resources and giving it a better value as the uh, first step. But the, the truth is, is that if the technology was actually better, more secure and faster, uh, then we would be building more interesting things on it without optimizing these, the scarcity mindset. So you're saying... Yeah. My bad, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. So you're saying that the the things that you can build you can't build as awesome things on ethereum well yeah i mean like think about gaming or right. anything that's like you know snap 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 within seconds mm -hmm. like like all the you, you know like the the, the hoops which, which we uh, we jump through setting an advanced setting in metamask to capture 13 gway overnight <laughs> yeah you know this is the dinosaur age of crypto yeah <laughs> yeah, that is a good point like the the metamask see i guess i'm not really looking at it from a game in a game type of perspective i'm still looking at it from a finance like 10 to 10 to 15 seconds is is fine for you know, for, for me to do a, a trade or to do an action but i, I can yeah. see where like if you're trying to do like a game or something so do you have a game in mind or are you just uh i i don't but uh, i want people to have a game in mind on a fast blockchain Okay, so before I get to all the stuff that I actually want to talk about, which which is not the X1 stuff, let's get all this X1 stuff out of our system. So how does, so what's the process? So we got ours in, what's next? Well, we don't have any Zen because we've been, <laughs> <laughs> actually I don't have any Zen, but 
we get some zen and then what uh, yeah not having zen is actually a feature right it's, it's actually crazy like it is actually doing what you said like it's it's designed to get out of your hands it's designed to be distributed like when you right. get it you kind of don't want right. to you you want to hold it but after a while you're like this is this is like a hot potato i'm but, holding but here. the positive thing uh with with uh, Ethereum being more expensive and gas being more expensive, it's it's uh, it's removing all of the short-term minters out. Yeah. They're not part of the ecosystem anymore. So what you have left are real people that actually want to uh, to use it for a long time, and they're, they're they have more of an investor mindset, not a short-term make money fast mindset, which is positive for uh, for Zen. Ah, oh, damn, it's got you mad, small one thing. Um, so yeah. Um, okay. So we have Zen. Let's say we have some Zen. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. In, in 300 days. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> then I have a lot of Zen on a daily basis. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. what is the, I don't want to say, I guess I say workflow, but what's the flow of actions that I take to get onto X1? Okay. So it's going to be beautiful. You will, you will love it. I think so. Uh, oh yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I I can see the way you're smiling. You're gonna love it right now. I mean, as long as it's not a dead like I just don't want any more dead. I really, you know, I don't I don't want another post chain. I don't want any more of this because I heard you say Q1 of 2024, and that's why I'm like, all right, let's go back to next man. Let's go back to the NEX coin. If we're talking about 2024, I don't want another post chain situation, man. Hey, I don't you wanna, don't have to worry about it. I don't want no hopium, man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, uh, this this is a point on the roadmap. And yeah, you said I something wanted, about that. So I this is to, this is something that's always already been. You had already been planning this. This isn't just. So the, let's go back to that then. So is this just a response to the people, or has this been on the roadmap? Okay, so uh, the roadmap was always being developed, but we needed to do a study of uh, ten different chains and mm. to understand uh, what, what are the challenges that those chains are having. And what is the better way to do it than to launch something that squeezes the, the juice? Yeah. Right? Vampire. And so we studied the impact on the chains. We understand what works, what doesn't. We understand the social economic uh, influence on every chain. And now we're gathering this intelligence to build something that is the best of all, world, all worlds, all chains the chain to rule them all. I feel you. So it wasn't a roadmap. Okay. That's good to know. It's good to know that you're just not like, you know, okay, let's make, oh, you guys want a, a blockchain? All right, let's make one. Cause I feel like I mean, it was kind of getting, I, I say that, but it's kind of like the way that Richard would say is just, this is just, uh, I feel you. it's yeah. flexing. Yeah. It's flexing. It's, uh, I mean, there was this one guy in the chat. He said, dude, you've been thinking about it for 18 months. That is actually not true. Hmm. I've been thinking about it maybe two months. Okay. But not, not, but not 18. So is there, so if it's two months, so Zen's been out for three. So that means you just started thinking about it then. So it's not really, a, is, is there, or is there ain't a roadmap, a roadmap? Yeah, it's on my, it's on my Twitter. <laughs> so that's the roadmap. So yeah. another question somebody asks is, um, how do you have enough and I don't really think it's actually needed because I can see how I can see how NEX would would stop the inflation in, by on, on its own. But do you have enough ideas to sustain for eight years to to fight inflation for eight years? Well, you you only met me uh, three months ago, right? And uh, you have seen the density of the ideas. I mean, so maybe you piled them all in at the beginning. Maybe you only had, maybe this is your, your best three. And you're like, you know, these are your Hail Marys. <laughs> I don't know. So, well, okay. So do you have anything else? Like, I mean, I don't, I don't, I'm not really tripping. I'm just, this is just, I'm just here for content. Sure. Sure. But do you have any other ideas? Like what's the next thing? I know you got ZMT, the Zen, the stake in ZMTs that should be here like yesterday. Right. Yeah, I'm sitting here like you work for me. Like this, when is it gonna be ready? When is the stake uh, in? I, I I do work for you. Actually. Yeah, I know. But <laughs> <laughs> so, 
so that should be done in what like a week or so right yeah 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 those 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 things are done that could be done anytime yeah you can yeah, just, throw just that want to make sure that nobody's complaining so you're not waiting for the the last day of 19 percent, are you uh no okay no. good no 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 <laughs> um I'm not waiting for that all right uh but yeah so ideas uh, I mean, like, so he here's the thing. Uh, when we started Zen, we had a lot of people join our Telegram group and the community and everybody had questions and they had ideas. Um, we started X1 Telegram group yesterday. It's already above 2,000 people that are active in it. Wow. Like, it's, it's instantly filled up and they're talking on voice chat nonstop those people and losers <laughs> okay but it's like yeah I, it's, it's it's great marketing okay go ahead yeah, but go let ahead, me continue man. the the quality of the conversation i have had on that x1 telegram group eclipses what i have had so far with zen because zen is basics it's yeah. basic for of first principles so people are just trying to figure out what the hell is gas now when people joined the x1 telegram group they actually ask questions like consensus, decentralization, uh, implementation details, ZK rollups, uh, ZK AVM, which is, stands for zero knowledge. It was actually, I was like back, uh, back at Google, but, uh, but better because I have the whole world uh, talking to me about like, what the hell is this? And why is it one uh, second block? Why is it a thousand transactions per second? Like what, what is happening? Like, how is it possible? Like that sort of thing. And so, what I'm saying is that the, I do have ideas, but the community has even more ideas that we'll be selecting from. But one of the basic ideas that uh, that's kind of warms my heart, so to speak, that is if I have a heart, uh, you know, being undead and all. <laughs> uh, 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 Uniswap, uh, April 1st, uh, that's when uh, you can copy it. I've seen somebody asked about that. So, so we're going to copy it to yes, April 1st this year. That was fast. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And so we're going to copy it, fork it, make it better and run and have it run multi-chain. Mm. And that, and that's uh, a new, new thing that nobody has really done yet. But so that's the uh, future, future, future still need to be investigated, whether it's even possible type of thing, but yeah, this so is where I want to be. I want them the Uniswap like decentralized multi-chain swap system. So this is before X1 or after? I'll have to be after because uh, it has to come up. Aww. See, that's that that's that opium. It's like a a, a opium crack house, bro. <laughs> <laughs> like, that telegram hey, is like a opium crack you, house. You, you, you know, here's the thing. I in, live in so any... close to the now, man. Live... In any project, in any project, you need to have a you need to have a proper balance between FOMO and FUD. Yeah. You cannot have just FOMO because it turns into a toxic opium and everybody's retarded. And you cannot <laughs> have all and you cannot just have FUD. Uh uh and you know, like there's this one guy comes to your telegram group and it turns into a FUD central. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I might add so, him back to the and you see how it's not helpful, right? Because it's like yeah. it becomes everybody like becomes stupid. I remember he said the supply would be at fifteen trillion by now, and it's like, nah, I hit it. I thought he was he was actually on point for some of the stuff, but I was like, nah, I don't. It's not looking like it's gonna look like that. So. Yeah, yeah. So what I'm saying is that you want to be a bit somewhere in in a in a balanced kind of type of uh, situation where you have enough FOMO and enough hopium. Because without the FOMO, then there's no forward-looking optimism. And with, without the FUD, there's no uh, critical thinking. So you okay, have to so have let's, let's fuel the hopium a little bit. So like, yeah. well, like I said, back to, I have my Zen. How do I get, how do we get to X1? What's the, what's the, what's the, the roadmap? This is, this is the X1. Oh, <laughs> so hey, I, you know I, my I, wife, she said you like, she, she said you remind her of uh, Jeffrey Dahmer. Uh, when you hold that up. <laughs> <laughs> it, this is a Hawaiian thing. We throw those things for sport. Really? Yeah. I said we got a we got an axe place across the street. You can drink beer. I'm in a red oh, state. Yeah. You can drink beer. It's a bar and you can throw axes nice. for sport. Yeah, I, I have a couple of those things. 
Those look extremely sharp, man. Oh, they're very sharp. You're I making can, me I can, nervous. I can, I can, I can, I can shave with this thing. Uh, but anyway, back to yeah, back man. To you keep trying point. to divert, man. No, 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 no. I'm just having fun. It's uh, it's early in the morning. The day just started. Uh, you're wearing, you're wearing red and green, and you know, and just I'm I'm just happy. I'm being happy. Uh, but anyway, so uh, so check this out. All right. Uh, Sell it uh, to we're me. Gonna, we're gonna have the test uh, test net out uh, pretty soon, like 30, 60 days, probably. And you can start playing with it. But it's gonna be different. It's not gonna have faucets. Okay. So usually testnet has this fake money that you can make. Okay. Right. So we're going to make it different. Uh, we're going to have a smart contract living on Ethereum that will take your Zen, burn it, convert it to a mirror token that will be mirrored on the new chain that you'll be using for gas. Okay. So the, so real, the economic, we're going to burn our real Zen. Real Zen, yeah. To so use the testnet. Yeah. <laughs> That's actually pretty funny. Well, that means the test net kind of, I don't want to go there. But wouldn't that kind of make to... the test net kind of valuable? Like, wouldn't that kind of make... Uh, yes, but it's not required. You're not required to be there to hold the X1 token. So X1 token lives on Ethereum, but it's mirrored to the test net. So you don't have to ever go to test net if you don't care. Okay. Even if you do not hold X1 token, but everybody else is burning Zen, your Zen in your pocket gets more valuable. Yeah. So if you're not playing, you're still playing. Yeah. And so that's good. Yeah, it is that's good. good I'm just trying to figure out why. Aim, I mean, I guess if they really want to test it. But listen, so there's there's people out there who want to get into this test uh, test net and play with it and understand that this whole ecosystem is going to be built out on it, play with the you know Uniswap new version and maybe some games, maybe mint some NFTs, maybe just get a feel of it. How is it to, how is it it feels to be in the Jack's house? Yeah. Right. You know. <laughs> bro, you know, you know, I'm like, you know how funny you are, bro. You're hilarious, man. Okay. <laughs> so so. We're not saying you have to burn all your Zen. Just right. burn a little bit. Just burn a little bit. Just like burn, burn like ten or a hundred, right? Yeah. And then what happens is that this this X one token on Ethereum, it's deflationary. It has a cap oh, supply. Oh, okay. So you're getting the X one on ETH. That's right. You're getting into X one on ETH uh, in software on a different chain, but when the main net com when the main net comes out. Uh, now you have your X1 in your pocket that may be super valuable because X1 is now developing. You see? Okay, I'm kind of getting it. So let me let me let me let me walk through it. I burn some Zen. I get X1 on ETH, right. and and then the X1 on ETH is mirrored onto a testnet. That's right. So if you have X1 on Ethereum, you're going to have uh, X1 on, 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 on X1 chain. On the real one or the testnet? It doesn't actually matter. So it's going to just testnet, it's going to turn into the main net. That's right. Yeah. Okay, got you. So, so it's a hybrid between the testnet and the main net. You see the difference? Yeah. Usually testnets is uh, not important because right. they don't have real ener economic energy at all. We're making testnet safer by having a mirror of X1 token on Ethereum that is deflationary versus hyperinflationary Zen. You see? Yeah. So based, it's, the supply is going to be based on the testnet? Uh, the, so I tweeted the tokenomics. It's 1 billion, uh, 1 billion um, uh, X1. Okay. It's on my Twitter. Yeah, I'm going to it right now. Yeah, one billion, uh, one billion number of tokens. Uh, Fifty percent of it will be burned over time. I just keep scrolling till you see a graphic. It's like, a, yeah, that's it. Right here. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Click in, click in to make it larger. Uh, X one chain with X one gas new will have one billion deflationary supply. Yeah, I seen this. Fifty percent of transaction fees will be burned. Fifty percent supply will burn over set period of time. Yeah, I, I mean. This is, uh, you got, you got to explain this. 
fifty percent supply would burn over a set period of time. Uh, yeah. So it's the same as BNB. Go to uh, BNB Burn that info. Yes, sir. Or maybe it's not that info. Just type in BNB Burn. It's a, it's a website's name. Mm, here it is. Yeah, that's it. So those guys are using a formula. And this formula is based on how many blocks their chain is producing and they're burning quarterly. So if you scroll down a bit, uh, click on uh, the second tab, the one that says uh, auto burn. And then this is how much money they're burning every quarter. Mm -hmm. So you need to multiply their tokens by about 300. That's what uh, BNB is about $300. So what's so what's you, what's determining how how okay the formula I got you? you yeah, yeah. So the now. blockchain itself produces blocks, and it's multiplied by the value divided by some other variables, and so it's an auto burn that they're fully transparently presenting. Now, if you're holding B and B, you're a happy investor because you know that a lot of it is being auto burned, mm. and that's why B and B only fell fifty percent and not. 80% like everything right. else fell. Right, I noticed that. Yep. Yeah, I got a little so, bit of BNB. So BNB supply is always reducing. It's always deflationary. And they're using this formula. Now, if you go back to that tab that you clicked and click on the other tab, you're going to see that the transactions that they're showing burning half of their BNB per transaction. So you can see the burn on the right-hand side. Mm -hmm. So they're making those coins disappear, which is bullish for BNB too, because the more B, uh, Binance chain is used, the the more valuable the BNB becomes. So you're going to use some type of formula like this? I'm just going to follow their model, maybe yeah. tweak it. Uh, but with their formula, we have history that it worked really well. Right. And it made BNB super uh, valuable to hold. Okay, so... One billion supply, because that was my initial. Yep. So this must not be the only way you're going to be able to get the X1 is through the test net. So it's going to be like you'll get a, you have a portion set aside for a test net or how is it going to line up? Um, so 30% of, uh, of the supply will be community distributed. Okay. Uh, the distribution will follow Zen burn which is going to be an auction style where the more Zen you burn, the more shares you get, and then you get the distribution every month. So this is like NEX? Like NEX, but simpler. Okay. So NEX, it... you, have, you have daily rounds, right. but that's with NEX. And you have reflection. And the reflection is driven by the protocol. Now, this is like NEX, except the proposed mechanism is 30 days. So in 30 days, you can just keep depositing your Zen to burn. On day 30, it burns, and then you're issued shares, and those shares are converted to X1. If you get the most shares, you get the bigger bigger piece of the pie. Uh, and so the game theory there is that if you're... Uh, 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 you cannot burn all of your Zen because you don't know what other players are playing with. Right. It's, it's, you don't want to come to a poker game with an ace and show everybody you're holding an ace. Yeah. You, you want to show, like, time maybe... In a little bit. Maybe like 10, maybe 9, but not an ace. And then if the game progresses and there's bigger and bigger players are playing, now you will be playing with your ace. So it's kind of like post-chain sacrifice. Exactly. <laughs> exactly like post-chain sacrifice with one, one big difference. What's that? It doesn't go to a sacrifice wallet. It burns. That's, that's true. It's not being held by one person. It's a true sacrifice. Oh, that is, that's, 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 that's some real shit, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's some real shit right there. Yeah. Uh, secured by blockchain, presented by consensus to be the true action, true sacrifice. Damn, man. Man, I be feeling, <laughs> I be feeling kind of sorry <laughs> for Richard, man. Like, I be feeling kind of bad, man. I be like, damn, man. It's kind of like. Let me just look at the chat, bro. Let's, let's read the chat. What's up? Who appreciate the 10 uh, lock in profit? What will be the Zen ETH ratio for X1 token? 
the next ratio, uh, is, uh, the ratio is uh, established by the community because uh, think about it. We just talked about the uh, auction, right? So if you're coming in with uh, very little, then obviously the auction looks different to you. And if you come with a lot, then uh, the outcome is different. But every month uh, for, for 36 months, you're going to play three years. Three years. Did I st was that in this? No, it's not in it, but no. uh, I'm telling you, it might be that. Um, not committing to it yet, but I think three years is a good, uh, uh, good time frame. Um, so three years sacrifice why... phase. Uh, yeah, yeah. Why not? I mean, like, <laughs> listen, uh, I mean we're waiting for... too, right? Mo most We've of waited too for come... post chain. <laughs> Doing nothing. Now, it, that's just the emissions coming, converting Zen and making Zen more valuable because we want Zen to be in play for a long time, right? And yeah. most of your Zen is coming out in 400 days anyway. Right. So that's halfway point. And I was thinking this must be like some type of this. This is it seems like this will line up perfectly for when all that inflation comes to the market. So let me show you this. This I'm going to show you some of my favorite stats. Um, let's go to uh, dashboard. So one of my favorite things to look at, I think it's over here. Is this right here? I like to crop all of this out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How is it <laughs> let's, let's ignore all that. This right here, this this um slope. Um, you can't see it because my head's in the way, but this is seems to be very bullish. Now, when I point this out, people always, you know, they tell me to look at this right here. So it seems like NEX, if I'm not mistaken, would come around this period right here. Yeah. Okay. It's funny that you say you say yeah like that. So NEX will come around this period right here. And it seems like X1 would come arrive at the perfect time to absorb, absorb all of this right here. Well, sorry. Is, is, is that like some type of strategy? I mean, it wouldn't be surprise me because it's, uh, it's, it's a strategy. It's, pretty blar it's blaringly obvious. So yeah, X1 will come out because I mean, it is a little bit concerning, but when you really look at it, it's not really, well, when you look at it like this, it's a little bit more concerning. When you look at it from this. So we're going to have on the peak We'll say like a trillion coming out. So yep. you're going to need something to absorb that. I mean, or we could just let the price fall. Yeah, but uh, add some like, more zeros. But look at the silly NFTs, NFTs. Like they're burning like almost nine. Yeah, just the, the, you said the silly NFTs. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. what I was saying too. Like it's funny how that there's what I've been doing the math on this 8.7. Last time we checked. It was less than eight before. Eight point seven. Excuse me, I know I'm not a math whiz like you, man. Yeah, I mean, me neither. Six point, six point three. Six point three. Oh, yes, back about fifteen percent. So yeah. this and this is with really no incentive, right? The incentive to make zunicorns and burn zen isn't really there. No, it it's is, definitely there because I mean it's because, there because we got some some a little bit of speculation now, but it's not. I'm not really motivated to do one yet. It's but, that's because you're not as in, you're not an NFT guy, but there's a lot of NFT people who are, it's their you know wet dream to uh, to hold something pause. that will never be produced. Right. My Again. point is this is good. I'm not saying that this is bad. I'm saying yeah. that fifteen well eight per eight point seven percent burn with no real <laughs> I keep saying no reason but it's like uh, I mean there, there's a reason it's just it's, you get it's, what it's, I'm saying uh, though you get what I'm trying to say it's it's a it's a play thing yeah play uh, a, a playful thing but but playful yes by the way your calculator you know how you got the 15 percent yeah just no I, I could just did to, this move your mouse yeah you could have done that <laughs> that's that shows 15 and I could have did 100 minus I mean I still would have had to do the math though Oh yeah. I still would have had to do like this. I would have had to do 100 minus <laughs> 84 or 92. So it's like, I'm still going to have to do some calculations, man. Okay. All right. Hey, I keep uh, it real though. Let's see. Yeah. Um, um, so without any true, I'm going to keep on saying incentive. 8% is really, really good. Yeah. So I can only imagine when I'm almost forced to burn 
what's going to happen. That's basically where I was getting to with that. Right. And, 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 and by the way, the auction method disregards the trillions because when the big boys come to play with their billions of Zen, they are playing against each other, you mm. see? And so that destroys uh, Zen quickly just because the scale of an auction equalizes the, the, the amount of Zen that has to be burned. Yeah. You see what I mean? Yeah, just like the post chain. It's like, <laughs> I keep going back to that. It's exactly yeah, like post chain. Yeah. It's like this ladder that you're kind of chasing, but it's every day. It's pretty yeah. epic, man. Yeah. Um, so, let's see. X1. I mean, I kind of get the distribution. I get the Y. Um, oh, I got a super chat here from... Um, oh, it's just a 19. She's rich, so she <laughs> Appreciate the 20, Bella. Um, yeah, let's see if we got any more questions. I'm, I, all of my que my my only real question is is NEX. Has that been like put to the on the back burner for a while or? Uh, not not really because we've been and we've been working on the economic uh, aspect of it. We haven't touched the code yet because we wanted to have uh, have this whole thing presented to the community and then generate questions and then uh, add things that people want and remove things that people do not want. But, you know, just it, it's better to think with a thousand brains than just a couple of brains that we have because there's certain things that we haven't thought about. Uh, and so, like, by the way, these NFTs, uh, uh, they're going to get airdrops uh, for X1. Okay. So, yeah. So what about the, uh, so tell me about the classes. So I'm sure Apex, they're going to get the best airdrop. So are collectors going to get airdrop or you got to burn? Uh, it's, it's gonna, uh, we, we haven't decided what to do with those uh, things yet because they're, they're easy to get, you see, yeah. they're easy to get, and there's no competition, uh, besides just you paying gas. So we're just going to have to decide uh, whether we will take them for burn and then issue an airdrop or not. That's yeah, I mean, it, as a, a collector, I only have collectors right now. Now they're all, I pretty much have only Zenturions. Burning a Zenturion as a Zen holder, I'm with it, but it's going to be hard. I mean, it depends on when, when it comes out <clears throat> because yeah, it, it's, 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 uh, I can't think of the term. I, I, I said it this morning, but it's kind of like, um, this game where you're, you're always like, um, on it. You don't know what to do, but it seems like the, the main thing to do since all of this is being done for Zen, it seems like everything that's happening is for the Ethereum Zen. So it might be best to just keep your Zen. You get what I'm saying? Sure. I mean, if, if you don't play the game, you're still benefit. Yeah. And and, and l l let me let me go back to the to the ethos and the original idea of of the L1 X1. I want to be the biggest customer of the Zen's ecosystem. Okay. You are the Zen owner, like a shareholder of the new build outs that I want to build on top of Zen. So I want to be the biggest builder that uses the Zen's ecosystem to give Zen more value. So everybody that holds Zen should experience the positive uh, bullishness, so to speak, based on what we plan to build. Now, what we're building, let's say that, let's say there's an amazing X1 that does everything great. It makes Zen bullish. Um, and it's also, well, obviously it gives utility to, uh, to the token. I mean, previously the utility was just described as the gas will be higher, Ethereum will be higher. It will be harder to get. It has deflationary formula in it built in. Eight years, you're done. That's it, end of story. Very basic idea. But now with Zen fueling the creation of X1, I become the, uh, the user of Zen. Everybody's Zen, by the way, not just my Zen, but everybody's Zen. And therefore, it's the currency to create the new decentralized world. That's what Zen is. Okay. 
Now, here's the other thing that I want to mention. I am likely going to raise Silicon Valley money for the X1. From them? From them, from the VCs. Okay. Now, now usually uh, the crypto DGENs, they raise money from regular people. Right. That's illegal. That's right. illegal. You can call it whatever you want, sacrifice, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't matter. It is a legal sale of security if you're if you're giving something that's a digital certificate and you expect the digital certificate to have value later. Yeah. That's it. I mean, that is not legal. 1934 SEC Act. It is kind of old though. But go ahead. Yeah, old. I mean, they keep referring to it, so. Yeah. Keep referring to it today. Yeah. So, <laughs> but anyway, and I understand why they've done it. The, the point is what I'm going to do. I'm not going to do any of that. No sacrifices from people and asking for people for money, nothing like that. I'll just go to all of the VCs that I know. So I know Sequoia, I know Kleiner Perkins. Those are the guys that invested in Google. They know me personally. Those mm. people. So it would be silly to ask for money to develop Zen because Zen is 400 lines of code. It's like you got a crack pipe in your hand and you're like, man, smoke this, smoke it, hit this, bro, hit it, hit this opium, bro. <laughs> well, I, I'm just, I mean, I know it sounds like opium. It does. Strange, but listen, I come from the, from the. From no, the I'm, not, I'm not saying I don't believe you. I do believe you, but I'm just want, I just don't want to be hopeful. <laughs> I just don't want to be. Uh, don't I be just, hopeful. Just watch, watch my Twitter. Yeah, I just, I just, I'm just gonna, I'm just, I'm just on, I'm just on the boat, man. I'm on the yeah. ship. You're I see, ship. I see Zen. I like Zen. X1, I'm all for it if it happens. Um, I like, I, I love the, the that test net. That's a, that's a banger of an idea right there. Yep, it's a test net that's a kind of true test net that actually takes Zen out of circulation. Yeah, it's test net, but it's like. It's kind of like Real. me, you know, have have dead. Yeah. <laughs> nah, man, you're AI. You're, you're chat GPT. Right, 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 right. Chat GPT, that's me. But anyway, so uh, I want, uh, in terms of the economics, I want to have an allocation for investors. I want them to buy future X1. Okay. And that's bullish for X1 because once that round is done, and the money is raised and I announce it and there is a press release, it's bullish for X1. And it's actually legal too. It's legal because they're accredited investors. And I'm not doing an uh, illegal sale of securities to uh, to the general population. Hold on, we got, we got somebody in the chat that say, um, by the way, VCs brought crypto CFI, the opposite of what cryptocurrency was invented for. Any, yeah. any <laughs> Any thoughts on that? Oh, I wanted to ask you about this. I'm glad. I'm actually glad he said that because it reminded me of something else. So X1, will it be, you know, you talk about first principles. Is it going to be, is the, is X1 going to be first principles? Can you say that uh, confidently? Um, it's so X1 is not really crypto. It's okay. technology. Okay, here we go. And there's and there's two ways to run to run it. And out of all of the blockchains out there, the only really truly decentralized blockchain is Bitcoin. I'm glad you said Every, Bitcoin. Everybody else tell you that it's all decentralized, it has validators, it has miners, whatever. Not all of it is controlled by a foundation that usually runs things. So people can imagine that Ethereum is super decentralized. They can imagine that Cardano does this and that. But the truth is Cardano Foundation controls everything. Yeah. Which is which is by definition uh, a CFI. Yeah. But it becomes a CFI when uh, uh, it becomes bad when they lie about it. Okay. They tell you that it's decentralized, it belongs to the people and all that uh, all those big words. But but they're holding the biggest bag and then the full control of the chain. Right. And so and that when you're transparent about this, so like BNB, for example, uh, BSC, Binance, they're transparent. They tell you exactly 
how much money went to angel investors exactly how much money in terms of tokens went to to vcs it's on chain it's on chain it's okay. published all of the data is available they never lied about it is is bsc centralized absolutely it mm -hmm. is does it work yes it does are they lying about it they do not so a person is uh, the person loses their chance to make proper decisions and their choice is taken away when somebody is lying to you. When you're having an informed decision made by a person who is not lying, makes the proper choices. So you're saying that we're going to have to trust you? No, you don't have to trust me. You can just verify what I'm saying because oh, yeah. it's verifiable. Uh, like, for example, I can say that my thing is decentralized, but it's not. And then you can actually verify that it's not. So I'm not, not, not going to be saying it. The test net is going to run on Amazon AWS. It's going to be centralized. And it's going to be centralized because it's being developed. And we need to have the admin keys to it so that, like, when the bridge gets hacked, we can actually turn it off and save everybody's money. Yeah, uh, man, you got me torn on this one, Jack. I can't even front, man. Well, <laughs> you see, you see what I mean, though. I get exactly what you're saying. As far as B, I, B and B is a good example. It's just that I'm not gonna lie and say this I'm is not, gonna be a de decentralized. Yeah, it's ecosystem. good that you're not gonna lie. That's that's good that you didn't lie. But yeah. I'm saying when things are centralized. That's when it goes wrong. It's always something. I'm I'm impressed with BNB that it wasn't, you know, there was no Black Swan event for BNB. I always, when the FTX thing happened, I was kind of on edge because I was like, man, BNB goes down. That's gonna affect me in some way, sure. even though I'm not on, even though I'm not really in finance like that. It's gonna. But but dude, FTX is not true crypto. They've been trading their database records, not not the crypto they they owned. Right. But, but I'm just saying, BNB. I'm I'm impressed that it that they were able to survive and they're still going. But it doesn't mean that it, one day something just the centralized thing of it. Just I just it just I just don't I just don't like that man. I, I know what you mean, but there needs to be a balance, uh, okay. a balance between safety and uh, complete decentralization because complete decentralization has its problems too. Like the, the reason why Bitcoin doesn't have any smart contracts, but it's fully decentralized. It's like almost like the blockchain's uh, trilemma, except it's a uh, control level trilemma. So here's the thing. This is, this is what I tell myself so that I can speak the truth. Zen is immutable. It's on chain. It's completely first principles. Not a way this can be changed. Yeah. Even it if goes I back to, to what you were saying. My bad. It goes back to what you were saying in Telegram. It's uh, you said it's great marketing. The blockchain is great marketing for Zen. This right. whole this whole blockchain. So I'm gonna just take it for that. This is a great. I. It's kind of like it's kind of like the hex and pulse chain. I like Hex. Pulse Chain, cool. I'll throw something at it, but I like Hex. Zen, I love Zen. I like the way it works. I like the way the, the burning, all that. Do with everything you can to burn all them coins. I, I love it. X1, great. Great marketing. You know, if it comes out, great. Um, but I, 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 I mean, I, I'm, I can't say I'm not with it, but I just wish there was a way. There's no way to like do a. It's, so you're saying there's no way to launch a decentralized blockchain these days? Well, no, because you need to have some. I mean, you need to have a system set up first, and somebody has to make the first move. So we're making that first move. Okay, so so you can't you can't just say that hey everybody let's just do this and everybody agrees and it, it, so the humans have to have consensus before the technology has consensus. Okay. I'm just wondering like, why? Wow. I, I guess I get the why Ooh, it's got to be centralized, but why not, why not try to 
why not try to break the barrier there too and make it the a decentralized uh, we can we can make the choice later okay once we learn others to learn about how to run it properly and 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 have it be safe so that we can establish the the baseline of what we're looking for in terms of the the the, the benefits of decentralization now uh, here's the most basic te technological problem with this decentralization Let's say that we have a lot of validators who are willing to run validation for uh, for the blockchain. And of course, they have to have X1. They have to stake it. They're going to get the yield from the fees being uh, being generated by the transaction. So, so far, so good. Now, that let's say that it grows large. It go, grows to 1,000 nodes. And 30% of those nodes don't really work well. And they kind of work OK, but not really great. So that makes that chain super sluggish and you know difficult to use that sort of thing and, and so the the aspect of keeping it alive and well and fast now is taken away from the focus of actually building on it where the whole infrastructure takes 70 percent of the effort just keeping it uh, functional and so that is why like for example we're running uh, a set of nodes on amazon it's in our cloud we're paying for it. It's fully centralized. It's super fast. And people can play with it. Now, we're not forcing anybody to play with it. And we're not saying, hey, give us your money now. Uh, we're just saying, hey, you want to play with it, burn some zen. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's, that's all we're saying. Now, in the future, once we have it designed the way we want and everything's... And of course, we're going to be making changes to, to it on, on, the, on the base level. Then we can say, all right, so now we want to have a consortium, a consensus of independent parties that are doing validation. And that's when it becomes more decentralized. And that's after it's, it's later down the road. Yeah. I mean, like right now, if I were to raise money uh, from the VCs, all I have to do is come to them and say, by the way, one, one second blocks, thousands of transactions per second. And we have millions of people using Zen. So we have the users, we have the tech that's amazing, and we have the technical expertise in the team to actually swing it. And so I should be able to raise a good amount of dollars in a standard way that the Silicon Valley does it and actually have the contracts done with those people so that they can get an allocation of X1. Now, it's bullish for X1 when the money is raised because the due diligence that those people do actually validate it for everyone else in the future. You see what I mean? Kind of. <laughs> it's a little, it's, this is a little bit further over my head, but I'm listening. Due diligence is when you come up, you, 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 come, you come up with an idea and you tell the world that this is the idea. And nobody is capable of understanding if this idea is good or not. But then you have an expert who gives you the money, an mm -hmm. investor. That investor brings technology experts to ask, is Jack really BSing or is it all true? And let's look, at the, let's look under the hood. So this expert looks under the hood and says, yes, it's all true. Give him the money. That's called due diligence. Yeah, I know now, what due diligence is. So due diligence is great for the rest of the people who do not care about due diligence. They just defer to the experts. Yeah. Now, I'm it didn't work out well for FTX, though, because nobody did due diligence on that. Right. <laughs> Which is incredible. Incredible. But I have been a person doing due diligence for VCs in Silicon Valley for a while now. They invite me as a subject matter expert. Yeah, I've seen on your, your resume, it says uh, VC. Yeah, so I worked with VCs. They, they invite me to, to, to talk to the new entrepreneurs that bring ideas, and I ask them the tough questions. Mm. And then I tell the VCs, are they investable or not? So, so that's, your, your, that's your job. So yeah, you're, it's my, it's, yeah, a, it's yeah. a hobby. It's kind of like a hobby. Yeah. I don't, I don't take anybody's, you know, they don't pay me for that. Right. I just like talking to people that come up with cool, cool stuff. And, you know. So what would you use the, um, the funds for? 
uh, just hiring more developers, for example, um, getting infrastructure set up. Like, for example, we can use Amazon. We can also use Google Cloud. We can use other clouds out there to be more technically decentralized. So it, it takes money to run all this. It also takes money to operate the whole thing. Like you can't just launch servers and say, okay, they're launched. So let's, let's have them play with themselves. You have to have a team that actually manages the infrastructure to make sure you don't run out of disk space, to make sure there's enough memory, to make sure there's no errors in the air log, uh, to get people uh, on the on-call duty so that they get paged when, when, uh, when the shit hits the fan. So I've been doing those sort of uh, developments and teams for the last 30 years. So I know how to run that type of infrastructure, but it takes money to do it. And so when you have the treasury uh, created from the VCs giving you the money, you now have your uh, capability to actually channel that money, that economic energy into something positive, whether it's bigger infrastructure, better people, better ideas like like for example did you know that do you know what zk is zero knowledge yeah i heard of zk knowledge proof yeah o okay so zk knowledge proof what, what it is, is in a nutshell is that you have an avm that runs, runs computation in ethereum right now every node that forms consensus have to rerun the computation they have to rerun it so it's waste right because all the nodes are just wasting their resources. Now, ZK, what uh, that does, ZK AVM specifically, it, it basically creates a signature that what they done on the computation, it's like a hash. That hash is accepted by the rest of the nodes as truth. So that's why it's called zero knowledge. You don't know what they did, but you know that what they did was right. Okay. Now, Polygon is working on the ZK EVM which will make it supremely faster than Ethereum because it unloads the chain from being uh, inundated by the empty computations that you do not need to run. That's coming out this year, probably. Uh, kind of like what ZK rollups uh, are for Ethereum, but Ethereum is maybe like three years away, maybe two, if we're optimistic. But Polygon is almost here. They already have the code. I looked at the code. And so if we can have ZK EVM on our chain, not only it's, I mean, it's fast now, like at over a thousand transactions per second. It's going to be tens of thousands of transactions per second. And of course, you can use less uh, equipment, less cloud servers to actually do more work. So it's overall more optimal and uh, it doesn't take away from the money that, uh, that will be invested uh, into this whole project. But anyway, so like uh, go, going back to Zen. So Zen is the people's coin, people's token. You hold Zen, you hold the future Zen, I hold the future Zen, it's, it's awesome. Everybody in the world will have it. Now, here is the side project, which is the X1, raises money, validates the whole strategy for the rest of the uh, future Zen holders, which is super bullish for Zen. So that's the plan. So uh, these VCs, are they gonna get an allocation? They have to, yeah. Oh man. You, yeah, but uh, you pushing me it. further and further away. No, I mean, like I, I'm being transparent. Yeah, I mean, you're being listen, transparent, so... all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's I, good I that you're being transparent. I am killing you, hoping, dude. Yeah, it's like you're gonna have you're gonna have a healthy outlook. On I'm going to just what... like I'm just going to just like Zen. I'm, I'll, I'll I'll play X one. I can't. It's the, here's the thing. I know I can't. I can't one up a VC. Like it's like yeah, okay, I'm gonna be at the, the bottom of the, <laughs> the food chain. On, on X1. No, 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 no. Wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. You are an o is an OG. Okay. You you get your huge allocation. Not not only you have the Zen, the future Zen, but you also have the knowledge that this is coming. You okay. can make the decisions earlier than anyone else out there. These VCs are coming in last. And by the way, they're going to have a vesting schedule too, like four years. Like they cannot get rid of their tokens. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to listen to some. I'm listening to you talk to GRC. I'm listening to you talk to GRC. I'm listening to you talk to Joker about this stuff. And I'm going I'm to I'm keep on digesting um, the information from this because. Yeah. So I, I like so, it. But it worries me a little bit to say that. Uh, I like Zen. Have, yeah, I like Zen too. 
I, like, we're not worried about Zen, right? That's the. That's I'm the gonna look line. at this. This is just a way. This is just marketing for Zen. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, listen. Let's say Zen is the currency everybody hold holding. Now, we can have Amazon accept Zen, and Amazon has VCs and shareholders and all that shebang, right? And we would be happy if Amazon accepts Zen, yeah. right? Or we can have X1 accept Zen, which has shareholders and VCs and and uh, runs as a corporation. Uh, is it bullish for Zen? Absolutely, it would be. Somebody in chat say VCs want profit, and it's like, yeah, they, they, but they gotta wait though. So yeah, they gotta wait. I mean, listen, this is this is one of the ways where the pro wanting profit is actually good for for the ecosystem, <laughs> because they're gonna force me to actually come up with not the BS decisions that kill everything. Because now I am responsible to them to do the right thing. Yeah. I think what it is, I'm actually really, really excited. And my, my, there's something about me is trying to like, keep me down. Like, it's like, yeah, this is actually really, 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 really bullish, but it's just the first principles, man. Well, it's like we're throwing all the first principles out the window three months no. in. No, no, we love Zen. Zen, Zen remains immutable. No, <laughs> but no this one... weird, let's do, let's go over here and do this. Let's go over here uh, to the um, whorehouse real quick and do this real quick. That's what kind of like X1 is a little bit. I mean, I mean, listen, here's the question. Let's say that you have a Zen holder that wants to commit crime. Okay. Can first principles of Zen stop him from committing crime? No. No. Or you do something good with Zen. Does it mean that first principles made you do good? No. People do will do what they will do, but Zen will remain first principles regardless. Yeah. But isn't it first principles? I thought it was Fair Crypto Foundation. Like, I guess today is the foundation. Zen is the foundation. You did get that one. Okay. Fair Crypto yeah. Foundation. Foundation well, is the, the, the base. But everything else on top of it <laughs> but, is not. But, but, but like, think about it. Having, having VCs is not inherently unfair because they taking the risk of something that doesn't even exist. Well, I guess I'm, I'm, I guess I'm not really saying that. I'm just thinking about the, uh, maybe not, maybe, maybe fair is the wrong thing. I'm just saying that the centralization, centralization, that's, that's, that's not first principles. Am I right? That's right. Centralization okay. is not first principles because the way that I describe first principles in my white paper is specifically decentralization. Right. Specifically. However, having built something that is centralized, that is a consumer of Zen, is still fine. It's not like we're changing the Zen's mechanics. We're just making it more valuable. We're giving people more choice. So you, you go to a gas station that's owned by a dude. It's centralized, but you like him. Yeah, yeah. There, there, there's a place. I, I, this is, this is, this is the Richard Hart speech, though. Like, this is the same um, Richard Hart speech as far as centralization goes. It's, well, he, he's, 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 he has been speaking about being a benevolent dictator. You know what the big difference between a benevolent dictator and and not a dictator? What's that? Who's not? Uh, corporations have board of directors who can fire a CEO. Mm. So like, for example, if I raise money and I have a board and I, and I go and I buy a couple of Lambos with their money, they're going to fire me. Right. <laughs> who, can fire, who can fire Richard? Um, I can. No, no, nobody. I fired his ass. No, yeah, well, okay. well, uh, you, you fired him. He blocked you, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. um, that is the difference. Uh, a benevolent dictator, it should not even be a thing because no CEO is a benevolent dictator. A CEO is not a dictator. CEO works for the board. The board represents the uh, viewpoint and uh, they protect the shareholder value. That's what the board is responsible for. So, and the board can execute uh, a voting decision to get rid of the CEO if the CEO is just buying Lambos or shopping Prado all day. Now it cannot. You see what I mean, though, right? Yeah, I get you for sure. So that is why it's not at all the same like Richard. Yeah. So.
Um, all right, let's see if like, you guys throw some some questions in the chat real quick. Yeah. Um, I'm feeling it. I just kind of, you know, I'm kind of scarred from from centralization, you know, from my experience, you know, with BitConnect, etc. So, I get kind of nervous, you know, when I'm in a crypto. I think I think that's what it's coming down to. I get kind of nervous when I'm in a crypto, and it's like, all right, we're about to start. We're gonna build this new thing. See the sacrifice. I I wasn't. I was I was kind of concerned about the sacrifice phase. But being able to sacrifice, I'm like, oh, yeah, okay, we're throwing some money away. I get it. And then you kind of like, okay, well, yeah, that wasn't really a sacrifice. So here we are again, and I'm like, okay, is this, am I going to get in any hot water for this? You know, that I think that's what it's really coming down to. But anyway, let me look at the chat. You're scarred from Richard. No, I'm not scarred from Richard. Um, yeah, yeah it's too bad I don't see the chat because uh, you don't. You just go to the YouTube channel. Yeah, but okay. My bad. I'll, I'll send you a link to it. Actually, I have it right here. I, I, I um. No, yeah. no. I'll, uh, I'll just look at YouTube. Yeah, that's about the best way to do it. Um. Yeah, you can just uh, read some. X1 admin keys. I guess we know that. Yeah, yeah, admin keys for sure. 100%. <laughs> like, what, what? What? It's like we're going backwards. Mm, no admin yeah. keys. Immutable. What happened to all of that? Yeah, that's, that's Zen. Nobody's taking Zen away from you. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, um, we, don't, we don't want Zen to be taken away. Uh, but we want the chain to be safely developed. Like if we build a bridge that's hackable and people are losing their money, we want to be able to have admin keys to, to put a stop to it. Uh, do you rank chains by gas fees or growth of mark on mark cap? If gas fee, can any chain increase their chain gas fee in order to surpass Ethereum? Can... Wow, the chat is exploding. Yeah, it's been very active. I don't even know how many people we got watching, actually. I'm curious. Four seven two, so, not bad. How many? Four seven two. I don't know what the peak was. Four seven two. Um four hundred and seventy two? Yeah. Wow, that's a record. Really? It might have yeah. been higher than that. Let's see. Let me see what the highest was. Oh, no, we're at the top, top right now. 470. Uh, let's look at the chat. My record is 10,000. Bacon that collapsed. Oh, yeah. I had 10,000 live viewers. Broke but, but anyway, so, <laughs> so like I, I announced X1 and, uh, and I know that you're lukewarm about the new chain and whatnot, but, but look at the community engagement. People are just yeah, it's so great excited. marketing. Great, so marketing. excited. Um, yeah, and we can actually show something. Like for example, uh, uh, I mean, I know that hexagons will help will hate me for ever bringing up pulse chain, but uh, I mean, people always ask me to compare. So, pulse chain is gonna be slower because it's based on Ethereum two, <laughs> and Ethereum two will run sequential transactions. Damn. So even if they change the block times to three seconds, like they were showing that they're doing, it doesn't change the fact that every transaction have to be executed sequentially. In Polygon technology, does it in parallel. So what's harder and, to do, Pulse Chain or X One? Pulse Chain. It's harder to do. Yeah, because they don't actually have the. I mean, there is open source, but then. Uh, it, it's whole, uh, you know, like those B-52 bombers, they're like, they're huge mm -hmm. flying fortress. That's yeah. what Ethereum is. Yeah. Uh, and it's flying and you're like, uh, we're gonna, we're gonna like fly next to it and, uh, reconstruct it in flight and see, if we can actually build a plane just like that, that flies just as well. <laughs> while we're in the air. <laughs> while, while you're in the air and try not to crash. That's, uh, that's what pulse chain development is. You see. Um, 
when it comes to Polygon, we're like, okay, here, here's a method to run Polygon uh, using Terraform, which is a scaling solution on Amazon. Boom, 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 it's done. That This is the easy part. The easy part is to have a fast chain that has nothing on it, has no users, has no any sort of smart contracts, like nothing. That That is the easy part. The harder part is actually to get everybody uh, to build on it and to be excited on it and actually have an economic model that makes sense. Now, the economic model that's novel, that what we have is what I described, is how X1 token is going to be mirrored on Ethereum. So it's almost opposite of a bridge because it's created on Ethereum first, and then you can mirror it over the uh, the sort of bridgeless connection between the chains. Uh -oh. So you can become a holder of X1 before X1 is live. Yeah, so explain that again, because it's a lot of people in here that, that, that probably didn't hear that. So you, you're saying, will burns in to get X1? Right. Uh, you, you will get a limited supply of X1. It's limited to, to, to a billion. And that will and be on Ethereum. That will be on Ethereum. And, and it'll have a copy. Go ahead. Yeah. It will have an exact copy on the X1. And for you to move your X1 from Ethereum to the X1, you're going to have to lock it up. And then you, you will mint the X1 equivalent gas token on the X1. Okay. So you... So it's not going to be like a mirror. It's going to be you have to you have to do something with X1 on Ethereum to get the yeah, one you, you, on you testnet. Yeah, you have to because otherwise you're going to have um, uh, not a true sync between between the chains. And then that testnet will turn into mainnet. So you'll basically um, fork testnet and then it'll turn into mainnet. Right. All all we need to do is change the word testnet to mainnet, <laughs> uh, and 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 it becomes mainnet. Yeah. But it, it'll work because there's value that was transferred the there. Yeah, yeah the, the, the value is a true value that's that lives there, but it's but it's safer because Ethereum. Uh, so so think you you know what the difference between L1 and L2? Um, so L2 runs the contracts on its own engine, but it settles in Ethereum. Yeah, like Polygon is like, I know it's like Uniswap V3 is on Polygon. Like you can do LP pools on Polygon. So we have reversed this model. We have said that Ethereum is the L2 for our testnet. Okay. You settle on Ethereum because that's where all of the investors are and the trade the traders and the minters and the burners. That's where all the action is. That's the L2 economically. And then we settle on our L1, X1. That's the novel approach here. Okay. Interesting. So everybody wants to go to Ethereum from their chains because Ethereum is, is, is Rome, right? It's the empire. Mm -hmm. And we're saying, no, no, no. We have 10 different chains. They're going to be acting like L2s to our L1. Mm, that's boss right there. It's a little different. Yeah. But I think it will work because uh, the way it's uh, the design is done. So are you concerned that if this turns out to be a ghost chain, it'll hurt Zen? No, because um, because uh, Zen is immutable. It's in every chain. It still has the same mechanics. I mean, uh, I would say, uh, here's what I believe. I believe that if things is a bullish, uh, element for Zen, it can also be bearish because it, you cannot be bullish without being bearish. Like if we fuck up or whatever, do something wrong, uh, then we can create problems. But that's true even now. Like uh, right now I could, uh, you know, I could do something like... You could disappear. Or I could do something what our favorite hero is doing. <laughs> and, that, and, and that would hurt it. Yeah. So man, please don't start wearing like Gucci and stuff. Man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you do it, it's cool, but oh yeah. man. And so I guess my point is, is that I already have the responsibility for acting properly. Uh, but, but, but there's a risk. What if I start acting improperly? So even, even Zen being decentralized, if the founder is implicated in something bad, then it's bad for the ecosystem. 
even even if it's immutable. You see? Yeah. Because the optics cannot be changed. You have to be uh, looking clean no matter what, even if the technology is helping you to be fully decentralized. Post Earthplane said, be innovative and figure out how to do L1 according to first principles. And you kind of talked about that a little bit, how like over time it could become decentralized. Yeah, uh, I think I think it it definitely will because we want the validators to make the yield on X1. Like we don't want to make our own yield. It doesn't make any sense, but we want other people to make yield. Um... Some, Zentosha keeps asking, I'm confused. Is X1 going to be ZK EVM or not? So it will be ZK EVM when it's out. Right now it's just the code that's in um, uh, in GitHub. Mm. That reminds me, I want to ask you, why do you only seem to stream with Hexkins? You don't seem to go outside of this small bubble of people. Like you were first talking, you were talking about how Zen is going to be like, ship and you know the ship supply why haven't you tried to like target ships community or why is it just like seem like you only talk to hexkins okay well you can answer this question by answering why am i talking to you right now no i i, I get what I, I go i know where you're going to go with it it's like we shows you we're talking to you i get that much but i guess i, I guess i would say why isn't there an effort to like there's like a, a huge Ethereum community that doesn't know about Zen and doesn't know that Zen is the reason why the deflation is is occurring right now. Because you guys are underdogs, and I'm building okay. a solid foundation. Okay, that's a good. I I kind of speculated that as far as like, I would say this about Heskins and me is, or I'll just speak for myself. This circle of people that you're in right now actually use crypto like on a daily basis. They're doing yeah. transactions yeah. all day, yeah. you, every you, day. You are the true crypto. Don't call DJ. me a DJ. Don't call me no DJ. <laughs> okay, okay. You you, went, you, uh, you you have a good good amount of ingenuity in you. <laughs> Digenuity. <laughs> That's funny. Um, so I mean, I, mean, I, I feel it, you on that one. It's, and it's you're saying everyone else love. is. It's a thing that you love, right? Yeah. And uh, and I am, I mean, like people think that I went and I targeted this community. That that is not true. You guys wanted to talk to me, and I just said, okay, let's talk. I, I didn't really care to talk to you. I, I talk to you now, but <laughs> it's like it seems I, I feel you. Like we, you, you, you kind of. So the storyline goes: you were on Twitter, you, you happened to log back into your Twitter, your ancient Twitter account from 2000, probably seven. You, and you said something about the hex chart that it looked yeah, like I, shit. Yeah, it said it looked like crap. And, it, and then it, the a hex can start saying, you gotta measure from the bottom. You gotta yeah, measure from the, from bottom. the bottom. And then you say crypto, uh, crypto coffee. Yeah. Reached out to you. Yeah, yeah, like they did within the hour. Of you saying the chart looks like shit? Yeah, yeah, within the hour. And he wanted he to talk to you about what? He he looked at my profile and he said that, uh, let's talk about Hex. Okay, so he saw your profile and that's what entered it. Because I'm, I'm wondering, like, what was it that made him say, okay, let's, let me do a stream with this dude who said that, that... I think he clicked on my LinkedIn, possibly. Okay, and he reached out to you. you and you guys did a stream. I have never watched that. I'm going to look for it. What were y'all talking about? Uh, his title f for the video was, uh, Bitcoin OG, uh, looks at hacks. Okay. Or something like that. And was it like, I guess I'm pretty sure it was a friendly conversation. I'm going to check it out. It was very friendly. It yeah. was very friendly. It was and very then... friendly. We talked about my history and how I found hacks and uh, what I think about it, that sort of thing. Okay. And I guess you liked, you said you liked hacks. Yeah. Okay. And then. Did... And I still do. Yeah. Yeah, I do too. It's just the founder is kind of like off his rocker. But so, <laughs> <laughs> so then more hex can start to reach out to you after they found out who you were. Yeah. With, and, well, and after like, they saw my stream with coffee, Mr. Coffee, three more hexagons said, okay, get on, our, get on our stream too. Yeah. 
So I guess it's, it, it, the clout chase ensued, basically. Like, they seen this guy from Google, and they're saying, you know, okay, this guy from Google likes hex, so we got to get this guy some 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 clout. We got to get him get him out there. Yeah, and, yeah. Yeah, because it's good for hex. Yeah. And it's good for the community to, to talk to, you know, a person like where I come from. Right? Yeah. So, and then... Richard Hart. So, at what point did Richard Hart DM? Who DM who first? Uh, you know, I don't remember actually. So, I remember Matty Allen. He said, "Hey, we're doing this PulseCon online. It would be great if you could talk to Richard." Mm -hmm. And once he announced that it's, they're going to be a conversation, we started talking on Twitter. Richard and I. Okay. And uh, I told Richard uh, that uh, I like his longevity talks, and and I actually do. I mean, I he, here's the funny thing about Richard: like, you guys all been following him sequentially. When I came into this sphere, uh, like your community, mm -hmm. um, I I didn't look at the timestamps of, of the videos, so I saw a majority of the. Uh, Richard's older videos, and I thought it was like the, they were current. All right. And I didn't, I didn't put the two and two together that the guy actually has changed, changed uh... the strategy. And like to me, it was like I, I, I felt like I'm talking to the guy from two years ago, because majority of the videos were produced two years ago. All right. And I had no idea that uh, something is, is new and different. And so uh, when I talked to Richard, I'm like, hey, I love your thing on. Uh, this longevity thing and blah 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 and and, and then I said, hey, uh, looks like Maddie wants us to talk. What should we talk about? Your resume is God mode, bro. I can't get over that, man. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I just hear him saying it. Your resume, you should never show me that shit, man. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you shouldn't have never show me that screenshot, man. What, what 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 did it do for you? Nah, it's just funny. Like I can hear it. Like it's what I what I grasped from that was that he wanted to do what everyone else was trying to do, which was show off that, hey, there are people who are intelligent who like Hex. That's what that that's what the vibe was from yeah. that. They wanted to show you off to the world that there here's this model smart guy who likes Hex. So he Hex it's you're our validation. You were the validation, and then the, the, the biggest validator know within the network, <laughs> right? And then it seems like, um, yeah, they got. I, I I just don't get why. I get why, but I think the approach is wrong. I think Hexkins, what they should have been doing was minting Zen. They still should, couldn't start now. <laughs> they should mint Zen and dump it for Hex, and the price will go up. It's like that is. It, I think that their approach is wrong and they should they should really be excited for Zen because Zen will help make Pulse Chain even more deflationary than it's already designed to be unless it can't handle it. Which That's I what I, I tell everybody. Like I'm in a couple of the hexagon groups. I'm like, hey guys, you know, I wanted to bring a lot of users to Pulse Chain that will burn all of your gas and make you pulse deflationary. Like that's gonna be great for everybody. Yeah. So I, I, I say that to those to to those guys. I just don't get what I think what it is. I think here's another thing I said too. I said that it's not the hex. A lot of people say the hex OGs don't like uh, Zen and Jack. I don't think it's the hex OGs. I think the hex OGs do like you. I think it's the hex top buyers who don't like you. The people who bought it too late and now they're down in the red and they see attention shifting to from these hex OGs who they looked up to shifting over to this new thing that's actually just frankly more exciting <laughs> than than hex is right now. So I think that's 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 um really what it what it boils down to. And because I, I was watching there's a guy that I've been watching. I'm, I'm starting to like his channel a little bit. It's called um, Broke Boy Crypto. He seems to be pretty unbiased. And they were talking about how, I think it was his channel, they were talking about how somebody said, why is Trevon uh, shifting over to Hex? Oh, not Hex, but shifting over to Zen from Hex. I thought he was in this, like, not, not everybody 
is one crypto and done. Like I, I, I've never, if I would, if I was like that, I wouldn't have got in hex. You see, so it's like you can't, you can't, you can't have that approach. You gotta, have, you gotta be open to new things and new people at all times, man. So I'm sorry, yeah. Haskins, but I would say use it as a way to promote hex man you could say hey you go go mine this free tokens in and sell it for hex if you'd have been doing that you would have you would probably have more hex dude do you want to sh- i i have been lolling so hard yesterday so hard what uh i i send you a link to twitter it's a it's a joker's one minute one minute video it is so funny it is well, you sent so to where funny. Uh, to your private chat on uh, StreamYard. Okay, let me see. Yeah, me you see. have I don't to see. Play I don't see it over here. Uh, oh, private chat. Me. I got you. Private chat. Yeah, click on private chat. Dude, it's one minute. You have to play it. It is so funny. Joker. It is so funny. Yeah, dude. Play him. You go. You go. You you're gonna be laughing your ass off. Uh, I, I find it hard to believe. Okay. Just Let's step, see. Show it in the screen. Hold on. Let me get it. Let me get it queued up. <laughs> Uh, I watched this thing three times because it was so funny, and every time I was like rolling on the floor. <laughs> okay. My chat, no brace for the cringe, guys. Brace yeah, for the it, cringe. It, it, it's uh, you know some uh, you have to be resistant to cringe because sometimes you can extract really a lot of uh, uh, funny energy from uh, from this. Okay. But blow it up though, so so that yeah, you yeah, can yeah. see what. Yeah, there we go. This oh, is this it. is the state of Hexagon. Listen, I'm gonna transform in my final form. Where's it's gonna happen. Oh, Once hit. that moon There's comes up. Are you ready, Xenians? <laughs> oh, my face is melting from the crew. Pure blood hexagons! Ha-ha! <laughs> I have the fangs, and we are going to bite tonight! Where's the hexagons? <laughs> Here we go! You find that funny? <laughs> Hold on, let me pull you back up. Uh, <laughs> Joker. Uh, uh, let's, let's look at the chat. <laughs> <laughs> let's look at the chat. That beat was hard though. Yep. Got <laughs> the plug on Jack out of that. I was giggling. Yeah, the blah blah blah. That was funny. <laughs> I like the. I like just sold all my men. I like when he says, that, Where, "Where's the full-blooded hexagons? We're gonna bite, bite tonight." Yeah, Joker's. He's. See, I don't like doing this. I, I I actually do not like talking about people who I'm not really like. You know, I don't want to feel like, like I'm 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 bullying. You know what I'm saying? But sometimes I want people to like. I think some people are better off, even myself. Sometimes, like I'm thinking about making another a whole other channel, like not crypto related. You know, just like entertainment. Cause I, I feel like people would like that if I made like a, a, a channel where I talk about like 
entertainment, like what Kanye did or something like that. So I think that some people are better off being in another lane. I think people, some people find this lane of crypto and they see it as a, they say a niche and they see an opportunity to like grow a brand. And I think that, I think Joker would be better off doing that, but doing it for not crypto. You get what I'm saying? Well, I don't know, dude. Every time I interviewed with him, the, the, the chart pumped. How many times was that? Like twice. And both times it pumped. You do that. I'm not uh, listen. I'm not going to say it's not because of the Joker. I'm not saying that it, it, the price didn't pump because of the Joker. I'm just saying that was the same day I said I bought Zen. Oh. Okay. Yeah, like, <laughs> that was the same. I think that was the same day that I did it. Or maybe it was the night before or something like that. You can probably pull it up. But I mean, I, I, I would say I, I, I like Joker over GRC. I would say I, I would rather watch you talk to I would say that I I'd rather you watch you talk to Joker. I watch a Joker stream before I watch a GRC stream. But I would still say, man, find some more people. You know, find well, some well here here's here's what combines you guys together, GRC Joker yourself and Oh man, do not know, bro. No, I I <laughs> in a stream you probably for me in a box. You're you're all critical thinkers and you're thinking for yourself. Uh GRC is not thinking for yourself. Okay, well, I'll reserve <laughs> my judgment. Joker, Joker might be thinking for himself. Uh, uh, yeah, I would say Joker might be more thinking for himself. Uh, yeah, GRC I mean, is just okay, going to well, go where well, the you, you, guys, you guys are spicy. You're asking questions. You're asking to be blocked by Richard. You have the balls to do it, and, uh, and you, don't, you don't care. Mm, don't, don't put me in my box for nobody. Okay. 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 You're you're very unique. You are. Your 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 style today is uh, looking yeah, great. I, just, I, I want that T-shirt. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I want that shirt. Where did you get it? Um, uh, I don't know where I got. It. I got this a couple years ago. Yeah. Yeah. I'm. I've been wearing Hawaiian stuff for like forever. I want something different. Yeah. This is when I when I pull this out. That it, it brings all the kangs out. <laughs> we was kangs. You heard about the um, the Eye of the Sahara. No, what is that? It's um, they say it's where Atlantis is. This is a guy. You want to watch it real quick? There's this oh, guy. oh, yeah, yeah. I I saw that. Uh, I I I'm, actually I am from Atlantis myself. No, nah, there's not nah, for real though. There's this guy that says that um, he was on Joe Rogan last night talking about the Ida Sahara. I, I, I watched that. It's it's like that uh, circular thing or something in there, right? Yeah, it's where Atlantis was. It's crazy, man. We was Kangs, man. It was in Africa. Yeah, that's when hey, it was know, uh, better climate. There's so much that points to that possibly being Atlantis. It's spectacular. So just to run down on Atlanta all day today, I've been watching for hours. I've been watching impact videos, videos about the, the Atlanta structure. And so let's just get into it. Let's do it. So the Rishot structure, I was on your show a little over a year ago and sh shared some details about it. To people who aren't aware, there's a location in the Western Sahara Desert of Mauritania called the we Rishot was Kangs. structure. It's also commonly referred to as the Eye of the Sahara. Wakanda forever. It is a site that most people have never seen or heard of before, which is truly peculiar. Dude, this is so funny. So I watched them yesterday too. You it's watched this yesterday? That, uh, astronauts yeah. typically yeah. 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 man. We're all the same person. It's all this. We all... You ever seen Lion King, We Are One? It all makes so much sense. It is a geological yeah. feature that is said to be volcanic yeah, in nature. I literally, <laughs> I literally, literally was watched this, this. this yeah. yesterday. Yeah, yesterday. I don't believe you. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. <laughs> and what's so spectacular about this it out i have a youtube channel called bright insight it's a as well, yeah just man um a big ass tsunami hit earth man and they say it's because of the um the pole shifts uh i think it's more of a meteorite type of situation think it's a meteorite yeah you don't think the poles are shifting uh they shift a little bit i don't think uh it was i mean so uh, there's this other dude, his name is uh, Graham Hancock. 
and he was talking to doing an interview and he said something interesting so he said that the atlanteans they had this uh spiritual technology there was the water guild the fire guild the air guild and the earth guild and that's how they were able to build the pyramids because they were chanting and those stones were levitating and then they had the water guild actually cut the stones with water so by human consciousness uh, interacting with the physical elements, they were able to build things. And so what happened to Atlantis is that uh, they decided to centralize, you know, kind of like create a sci-fi world, if you will. And uh, they wanted everybody to fold in line in their religion or something like that. And what, what happened is that because they were so in tune with the physical elements, they have disrupted the Earth's magnetic field and caused the poles to shift. Mm. which caused the cataclysm and the the big wave just uh, destroy everybody yeah, this dude right here is scary though um chat's telling me to get off of it so i tried <laughs> in the interview you're playing uh, uh <laughs> why don't you develop on the chains i mean i think we kind of covered it all man You know, everybody's talking about the metaphysics. Yeah, Atlantis was real. Yeah, I, I believe it. Yeah, I do too. I can, especially after watching. I watch. Did you watch his, his video on it from his his channel? I watched his video afterwards. We ain't gonna watch yeah. it right now. You can see. You gonna have to lie and say you you, you seen it. <laughs> uh, I think I saw that video because I remember seeing the circle thing. Yeah, he goes into it pretty deep. And, uh, yeah, that was definitely Atlantis. Um, very interesting. Well, all right, Jack, I'm going to let you go. I'm going to go for my bike ride. Give me some exercise in what you got to do. Nice. Nice. Well, I'm glad we had a chance to discuss the, uh, plan for the world domination. So it was good. yes, now you may go continue, go get the VCs. Thank you. I, I always tell people that I have to ask Trivon for permission to, to do anything, so... Of course. So, you're... Uh, yeah. Yeah, so here, here, here we were, and uh, I'm, I'm glad I'm, I'm getting blessed. You may continue your work. Thank you. All right, talk to you in the next one, bro. Okay, see you. Peace. Peace. Well, guys... How we feeling? Then we have 551.